Welcome back to the Game Link Podcast. I'm your host, Lebby, and as always, I'm joined with Elmer here. Hey, D. Hortier. <laughs> um, today is, I think it's our 24th episode, right? Mm. Uh, we're going to be talking about Doom, um, the 2005 Doom movie starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson. And Carl Urban. <laughs> and I'm going to be talking about the original Doom game, and maybe we'll... I'm sure we'll talk about the newer ones as well a little bit, but hope so. Um, yeah. So before that, uh, how was your week, Elmer? What'd you do? Uh, pretty much this past week, I had a good majority out of it off, so I just kind of took it easy around the house, kind of uh, got things back in order after my trip from a couple weeks ago, which I still hadn't gotten along with doing that. Um, but as I told you right before we started filming, I um, <laughs> I got to have a little bit of fun this week on oh, Wednesday. Boy. Uh, which, as people know on this show, I'm a pawnbroker by trade. Um, apparently, some really good shit came into our kind of region where I'm a pawnbroker out of. It seemed like every single junkie and their mother was coming out of the woodwork trying to make some scratch, so that way they go pick up some scratch. And uh, anyway, two of the scuzziest looking guys I've ever seen come walking in there with a Mega Blocks Halo set. We don't take toys, but. My coworker thought, you know what? I'm gonna indulge these guys because we got 20 minutes before we close, and what else am I gonna do? So he's talking to them about a Halo off-brand Lego set, and uh, one of the funniest things I've ever seen was one of these guys scratching himself profusely while trying to describe what Halo was to my coworker. <laughs> and then finally, I'm like, okay, this is too funny. I gotta butt in, and I said, and the guy's like, yeah, man. I mean, Halo. It's like one of the most famous game franchises out there, and I just go. Well, maybe 10 years ago, but everybody who I know has basically kicked the thing cold turkey well, after Halo Infinite came out. And, and the it, guy turns and looks at me and actually says, oh, an Apex Legends player, I see. Oh, God. And I turned and I looked at him and said, Pfft. I said, I work for a living. You think I have time to play fucking video games? <laughs> the, yeah. And the guy never made eye contact with me again. <laughs> yeah, no, I remember those uh, Halo Mega Blocks. That was a weird crossover. Want to hear the funny part? They're still making them. Oh, of course. <laughs> oh, let's see. What did I do? I. Oh, and I should mention, while I was saying this, I was standing there wearing a Mortal Kombat 2 t shirt. <laughs> As I said, video games, pff, I work for a living, pal. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to. Uh... I, I ordered a bunch of parts this week for uh, I'm rebuilding an iPod, which I was just tell, telling Elmer a little bit ago. Uh, I found my old iPod from like 2009 uh, rattling around in my car, and it's pretty beat up, beat up. So I'm like putting a bigger battery in there, more storage. I'm putting it in a nice pretty shell. It's going to be fun. Uh, Basically, he's turning his iPod shuffle into a full-blown uh, jump drive <laughs> at this point. No. It's not an iPod shuffle. It's an iPod classic. Um, does it have the four buttons or does it still have the scroll wheel? It has the wheel. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm really excited about that. And I also I played a bunch of uh, Guacamelee 2 on my Steam Deck. Oh, yeah. Which, um, man, I think I mentioned that game last week, too. But that is so... I cannot underestimate or overestimate or overpromise on this game. It is amazing. It's, like, one of my favorite games. So, um yeah, otherwise it's just been a normal week. Um, but yeah, so Doom, um, this this whole game, it's kind of crazy how it like came to be because um, it was made for the PC, which at the time, this was the 90s, and they hadn't really figured out like smooth scrolling on the PC. So like it was more like the original Zelda where you'd walk to the end of a screen and it would load the next screen. Whereas like Mario had that scrolling background, right? So the whole, like the whole thing that, um, what is his name? John Carmack. Mm -hmm. And, uh, what's his name? John Romero. They were like working at this little game company that was like just shipping out little PC games on floppy disks and uh, they got pretty much bored one night and decided to, like, John Carmack decided to crack smooth scrolling on the PC. And, like, because of this, uh, like, long story short, it ends up, like, 
being the basis on of their like 3D game engine. Um, which so they start making Doom, and it it, uh, it of course gets insanely popular. But like, not only did they um, like kind of bring 3D to the PC, but they also pretty much brought multiplayer, like online multiplayer, to it as well. Um, so like in this <laughs> in this we watched an episode of um, High Score. I think it's on Netflix, but uh, the last episode is it's a docu series about video games, and they cover um, Doom. Uh, and I definitely recommend that you watch it. Uh, it's it's really good. On the same vein, I also highly recommend um, Stephen Br- or uh, Stuart Brown's Ahoy series or Retro Ahoy series, where he talks about bo- uh, pretty much the history of ID. Oh, yeah. From both uh, the creation of Wolfenstein, uh, Doom, and then as well into the, the Quake series as, uh, as kind of a continuation. And, uh, no, all fantastic sort of um, documentaries about early video games and stuff like that. And I'm kind of shocked you didn't bring up uh, Wolfenstein there. Oh, I was getting there. My apologies. Um, <laughs> Not to jump the gun or anything. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, um, they so that high score show they interviewed um john romero and stuff so a lot of what i'll be referencing i guess is from that but um yeah once they started making doom they basically just used part of the code for wolfenstein 3d um because that was a 3d game but now they have the smooth scrolling so you could do like more more like like better feeling movement and and map layout and stuff like that um here's kind of the one fun thing are you going to bring this up about how technically while it is a quote-unquote 3d environment it itself is not an actual 3d game right it's it's 2d 2.5d <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's like uh gosh i can't remember what it's called but it kind of uses that same thing like mario 64 does where it's a flat image um, but it just looks 3D when it's pointed at you. So, The best way to describe it is the game Gauntlet, if anyone's ever played that. Oh, yeah, Where yeah, it's basically, go. it's from a perspective, as you're turning around, you're able to kind of see in your environment. It's technically that, but they've shifted the perspective instead of being from top down, where it is actually a first person within that regard. So it is w- the one of the first most successful first person games, but it's not technically the first... <laughs> first person 3d game that was a few years later yeah quake oh yeah quake well we'll cross that bridge when we get <laughs> yeah um so they they decided to release this game as like the the first part of it would always be free i think it was like the first six levels or something were free and then if you wanted more you'd have to buy the other discs from them um and once they developed the the online portion of it, um, they said they had so many downloads on the release day that it like crashed the servers just over and over and over. So um, it definitely uh, definitely had a big impact. Depending upon who you believe, there are actual still rumors rolling around that certain regions of the United States that all the people trying to download Doom actually crashed it in cert- uh, the internet services in some of the regions. I know there's one story outside of Chicago, another one outside of San Diego. Um, one outside of Austin. I remember hearing those three specifically that completely fried the entire uh, dial-up connections. <laughs> yeah, I love I love stories like that. Um, like I, Romero was saying that, um, you know, when they were developing the online multiplayer, they were playing these four these four player matches where you would just kill someone and they'd respawn and you'd die and respawn and whatever and so it was never like uh never like a set amount of lives it was just how many kills you could get before the time ran out or whatever and um this is when romero actually like coined the term deathmatch for this style of gameplay um he he also proposed um adding a cooperative multiplayer mode um, and I don't know if that ever actually made it in. I, I didn't have internet when I was playing the first Doom. So I, I don't know if that ever made it. Let's see. Uh, it doesn't feel like it did, but I know that some of the later versions of Doom 
they did implement an actual way to connect it like that, but I don't know if the original game. Had yeah, it. I don't think. I don't think the original one had it, <laughs> but. Um, yeah, for like the re-release on like the PlayStation, uh, like Vita and stuff of the 3D Doom, I know that I had it. Um, yeah, so obviously it got really popular. What's I mean, it was kind of iconic for being like this really like gr- gritty, like <laughs> visceral. All the songs in it are MIDI versions of their like their favorite like rock songs. Like every single song yeah, is either yeah. Metallica or Megadeth or Static X, and all they did is they changed it up a little bit. Yep. Uh, you run around with, okay, a little a spoiler into Doom sci-fi 2. horror game, right? Into Doom Two, then you get the double barrel shotgun. But along with the chainsaw, there's references in it to freaking you know Evil Dead Two and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and stuff like that, and. I mean, they flat out said, I mean, I don't know how far you got into there, if I'm going to be spoiling anything, but um, kind of a takeoff of last week. Originally, when they were developing the game, they approached 20th Century Fox, and they said, hey, we want to make an Aliens game. And 20th Century Fox, being the visionaries that they were, <laughs> said, why the fuck do we want to make a video game? And basically shut them out. <laughs> and from then on out, there's rarely ever been a good alien game released after that it's Maybe, true call it the aliens curse it's true so after they got shut down they're like well shit now what are we gonna do but car uh john carmack was the one who came up with it because apparently it was based off of some of their D D, their in office D D sessions they yeah. had about like fighting the forces of hell like he's just like well, what if they open up like a hell portal on mars that might be kind of fun Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. It really was just like two dudes in the '90s hanging out in a basement and coding, listening to metal, playing fighting games. Like, uh, it's just really cool that like such a huge game that had such a big impact came from just like two dudes. You know, um, it just makes you feel good knowing that you know what these creators they knew exactly who they were appealing to, and it wasn't. They they looked at a game as an assignment. No, 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 no. They went, what is the game we want to play? And they made that game. Well, and the cool thing is, too, like, during the interview that we saw, he was saying that, and I remember this, too, because, like, a lot of modern, like, indie games and stuff will actually use, like, a certain version of the Doom engine. Like, they released the engine to the public. So, like, you could make your own maps and levels and... Uh, he was saying like they wanted people to like be creative and like modify the game to suit them uh, and you definitely would never hear anyone say that today uh, so this dude was way ahead of his time uh, and unfortunately he's also responsible for Daikatana John Romero is about to make you his bitch <laughs> in me. When you say that about just kind of personalization, let's put it this way. How many times do we see people doing really creative and cool stuff in, say, like Skyrim or Fallout? And Bethesda takes one look and goes, ha ha, cease and desist. <laughs> Isn't Bethesda a publisher for Doom? No. They are now. Yeah, they that's, are now. that's weird. That's weird. Uh, yeah, but, um, what's, like, because I know you've played the original Doom, what's your, your favorite weapon? And you can include Doom, too, it's pretty much the same thing. Super shotgun. Definitely the super shotgun. The ability to run onto a map and literally scream, this is my boomstick, and watch every (laughs) single pinky, imp, and whatever else walks in front of you just drop is fantastic. If we're talking about the original Doom games, I should say. Yeah. We start getting a little closer into the modern era, a little bit more. Um, If it's not too much of a spoiler for me to say, I love the Doom games. I grew up on them, and let's put it this way, before I ever played Doom, my cousin introduced me to Chex Quest, a.k.a. (laughs) Chex Doom. (laughs) The Chex Doom mod, which uh, Toy Galaxy did a fantastic episode going in depth in terms of what Chex Quest is. And the funniest part is, a few years back, somebody put together a five-minute video where they modded Doom 2016 to be Chex Quest 2016, and it is wonderful. <laughs> yeah, um, there's a lot of goofy little mods like that, too, which I, I love. Uh, which is really funny. 
because then 20th Century Fox later, in about 1995, 1996-ish, for the release of the 3D, or sorry, the Atari Jaguar, they tasked Rebellion with making a Alien vs. Predator game using two of their most popular franchises to make an actual video game for. They basically did an overlay skin of fucking Doom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I love it. And, uh, man, like, I like a lot of the weapons in, in Doom, but... Yeah, I think my favorite would also have to be one of the shotguns. Because there's nothing more satisfying than, like, a game that's as visceral as that, where you just shoot a gun and see the spray, you know? It's great. While this was not the game that created jibbing, at the same time, this was the precursor to it. It was until Quake that we got the actual jibbing um, gameplay to it. But <laughs> this was the game that cemented, you need a shotgun in your game. <laughs> um... Yeah, and then, gosh, I, oh yeah, uh, Doom VR. Uh, <laughs> Doom VR is like one of the first VR games that I bought myself when I got the PlayStation VR, which kind of overall ended up being a waste of money, but that's here nor there. Uh, Doom VR is a great game. It's like right up there with Super Hot. Um, movement is a little jank, but that like... That is a uh, like a good environment for like fast-paced VR shooting stuff, um, and it's based off Doom 2016. So um, it looks great. It like oh man, you like chainsawing someone like right there. Uh, that's that's a <laughs> that's a favorite of Elmer's to play when we have the VR hooked up. Oh, I'm not thinking of that. I'm just thinking <laughs> of playing BFG Division, running around with the chainsaw and the BFG. And oh just, my oh, God! Oh, yeah, we oh, forgot oh, to oh, even oh. like. I guess this isn't about the original Doom games anymore, but specifically the 2016 mm. Doom and Eternal as well. And Eternal, the soundtracks for those games. Mick Gordon mm. is a goddamn. It's just like a maestro. <laughs> It's, like, revolutionary for, like, the way video game music works and for, like, a lot of metal stuff, too. Like, um, I might be butchering this explanation, but you can look it up. There's a whole little little documentary video about it on YouTube. But the sound designer, they kind of wrote different parts. Like, each song would con consist of, like, a bunch of different parts that could be swapped in and out at will to suit the mood or the amount of enemies on the screen or like where you were in a level and so like the soundtrack isn't just like oh this is the track for this level and it's three minutes long here you go it's like the song is as long as it needs to be um and it like picks up and slows down with your with your combat and it just it feels so good my favorite thing of that game when it comes to the music other than the song bfg division which is to this day to me is up there with like uh you know uh like Cherub crescendo number uh, like 16 of like gregorian chant it's up there with like mozart's you know <laughs> requiem uh, edward griggs in the model or in the hall of the mountain king you know wagner's ride of the valkyries no bfg division is there which forever now if you need some badass to walk into a room and kill everything if it's not on the same level as bfg division y you're falling flat it, it set the new high bar for it uh but one of my favorite things is actually for it, mick gordon i can't remember the name of the song for the actual bass line and chorus to it they hooked a chainsaw up to an amplifier yeah yeah it's yeah it's so in cool. like the i think that's in the title song and you can you can hear it too once someone points it out to you. Yeah, they just they just ran a chainsaw revving into a into an amplifier and then they auto tune it um, for like the bass line. It's it's badass. They they also did a bunch of cool stuff like if you t I can't remember which song it was off the 2016 soundtrack, but if you put the song into a waveform analyzer, it would show the Doom Skull. Like in the actual waveform, it was it's wild. Like you you should look it all up. Just like I we could talk forever about the soundtrack alone. Um, Before we finish it out, I guess we should say about the little bit of a snafu that did end up happening with Doom Eternal in terms of its soundtrack. 
I love Doom Eternal so much. It's one of the most fun... It's some of the most fun I've had in a video game in a very, very long time, and definitely a stepping stone in terms of where modern shooters are starting to go in terms of just sort of the mechanics of being able to fly as fast as you can around as well as weapon swap on the battlefield and as well as implementa or implementing you know environmental effects with your combat mm -hmm. you know you know <laughs> for people who haven't played it the best way to describe Doom, e Doom Eternal if you haven't done it it's like a combination of Just Cause fucking Halo and uh, I don't know maybe a little bit of like um, uh, Dark Souls to it in terms of you gotta kind of know the rhythms down of your enemies yeah. as you're fighting them Unfortunately, so that game was actually delayed. Um, it was originally supposed to come out in 2019 due to some problems that they ended up having. And the, the actual developers, Hugo Martin, the actual showrunner himself, said, we were really sorry. Just understand we're going to give you guys the best game we possibly can. We just yeah. need a little more time. And six months later, they released it in March of 2020. Unfortunately, during that process, things got miscrossed. Mick Gordon, the actual composer for it, while he was trying to do the sound mixing, he found out that he had four weeks cut out of his actual schedule of being able to mix the sounds properly. He got pissed and watched, walked off the project. Oh, man. So, unfortunately, there is a little bit of bad blood there, yeah. which is why some of the sound mixing is not quite nearly as good you know, as originally I, 2020, but at the same... Or as 2016, but still, the sound... Uh, you thing, know... That game is fucking crazy. I, I actually haven't played Eternal yet, but we could talk about that more when we watch Doom Annihilation. The only incentive to watch Doom Annihilation. Yeah. So, yeah. not to get too much into it, but we figured we'd throw that out there quickly yeah. just to say about... Yeah, so, uh, I guess that's the thing with, with Doom. Like, this movie... Uh, this movie got got a pretty bad rap. Uh, people don't seem to like it. And I was kind of in that camp um, from, like, what I've seen of it. I figured it would be bad. And I've seen Doom Annihilation, which don't even get me started but um yeah this this one turned out to be surprisingly like fun in a lot of parts like i saw this film around the same time it came out i didn't see it in the theater because i was way too young to be seeing this in the theater when it came out but i did remember catching it on video right after it came out and i remember not liking it like a hmm. lot I remember going back and revisiting it just a few years ago, and when I saw it, I'm like, okay, it's a little more fun than I thought it was. I'm not going to lie. Upon revisiting it this time, I'm thinking to myself the entire time, have I been wrong for the better part of, 50, of almost 17 <laughs> years? Is this movie actually maybe not a hidden masterpiece, but at the same time kind of a higher benchmark in terms of video game adaptations? I mean, it's still boring as sin, but at the same time, it's like... I may have been selling it kind of short. Yeah, like who's so whose idea was this movie even? Um, well, basically, ever since the game was kind of a success, I mean, unfortunately, thanks to the Super Mario Brothers movie kind of being the shit show it was, um, simultaneously, <laughs> it kind of made money at the box office. So yeah. every single movie producer was like, well, shit, if kids like these video games so much, what if we just made movies off of them? And kind of as our podcast has shown, it's really hard to kind of crack that code in terms yeah. of getting it right. <laughs> well, I think I was saying this earlier today, like, for a video game movie, like, it, it really doesn't have to be anything crazy. Like, just make it fun. Mm-hmm. You know, just... <laughs> and that is the one thing this movie is kind of not until it kind of is for about five minutes. It's... It's, it's too serious. It's Yeah, it's it's like not good, but in a fun way. What this movie did is it decided to do, what if we made Doom 3, but we set it in the not-too-distant future? Which is yeah. the worst thing they could have done for that. Because, look, I don't mind Doom 3. It, it's, it is very much a game of its era. However, I will say, once you actually start playing around with the gunplay in it, it can be a lot of fun. Mm. Yeah, I played a lot of Doom 3, actually. But that's the thing, though. When you think of Doom, you don't think so much about survival horror. You think about runny, gunny, meaty, shooty kind of yeah, a gameplay. sci-fi horror, maybe not survival horror. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, no, I liked I liked Doom 3, though. That was I, I still have my PC disc copy of that <laughs> game. Uh, I played that one a lot. I've got an Xbox copy somewhere floating around my house. So. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, but uh, was there anything interesting? Did you find out anything interesting about like the the production of the movie? Or... Uh, the one kind of neat thing, so heavily borrowing from a lot of the influences of this film, the two people that the directors were or the producers really were trying to get for the longest time. They wanted for the character of Sarge to be played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, just so that way the Predator uh, references and influence, you know, could fully be felt. That would have been interesting. But they wanted for the main for the character of Reaper, played by the great Carl Urban in this. From uh, mm -hmm. for people who aren't sure, he is the gentleman who played Dread in the mm -hmm. 2020 masterpiece, as well as he is currently playing uh, Billy Butcher on The Boys on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Uh, this was one of his first times trying to do an American accent, and you can tell. <laughs> He's not nearly as bad as who his uh, sister's, or the gal who plays his sister in this movie, uh, the great Roseman Pike as well, which, thank God, she learned how to do an American accent. Otherwise, I don't think Gone Girl would have gotten that Academy <laughs> Award nomination like it did. But, um, yeah, no, originally for the character of Grim Reaper in the movie, uh, they wanted Vin Diesel. Oh, I can see that. So Arnold versus <laughs> Shark. That's all I hear. But no, instead we've got uh, we've got the Rock versus uh, Carl Urban, the Dread, and yeah. er, versus Dread uh, slash Bones McCoy. And I can tell you right now, uh, this is the one era during the Rock's uh, kind of history, filmography, however you want to put it, and during his career where he's not the jacked monster that he is today. That is kind yeah. of scary to see. So he actually yeah. looks somewhat approachable. So when you're seeing Carl Urban go to toe to toe with him, you're like, "Oh, I buy that." <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's not inflated like he is now. Like he just... doesn't look like a goddamn Macy's Day parade balloon. <laughs> yeah, oh, hey, is that for the new Jumanji film? No, that's just that's just uh, Dwayne Johnson walking down the street with a hot with a pronto pop. Yeah, and you know, I don't really, I don't really like. Dwayne the Rock Johnson in movies, uh, like I think his character is usually just like way too over the top. So I was expecting to hate his character in this one, but he was probably the best character in this whole movie. You were <laughs> siding with him during the movie, and he's the main villain. <laughs> You're going, yeah, shoot him. He did. He did disobey direct orders. I'm just like, oh, that God. was that was sarcastic. No, so. Didn't sound like it at the at, time. <laughs> at one point in the movie, uh, like he gives an order to the person underneath him, and the guy's like, "No," and he's like, "No, that's a direct order. Like, do it." And he's like, "Go to hell!" And then he just shoots the guy in the head. And so I'm like, "What was he supposed to do? Let him live?" Like, <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, they were under quarantine with a mass virus that was going around there. That was before he got infected by the actual virus. So at yeah. the same time, it's like. You know, he was kind. Of, he was actually kind of following orders, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, but no, this this movie was an unexpected like romp almost. Uh, like it would it moved pretty slow and took itself really seriously at times. But oh man, it was just. But then they also they break the golden. Okay, like I like I posed you earlier. What are the two things that everybody knows about fucking Doom? Right, right. Everyone knows that it's sci-fi horror and that you're fighting demons from a portal from hell. And what do they cut out of this film? So this, instead of uh, demons from hell, it's mutated humans from a failed science experiment. We get an extra chromosome and we become monsters. Yep, and the movie really goes through some length to explain how it mutates and like what the scientists were trying to do and like it, was, it wasn't really that hard to just oh uh, we accidentally created a portal to hell when we were you know mining this planet you know uh so that that's i think the biggest thing i i dislike about it this movie needed to be less aliens. It needed to be more Total Recall. That's what this film needed. Yeah, it, it tried to build suspense, but it tried to build suspense at the cost of action. Um, but otherwise, it had some really great, like, ch really cheesy scenes where uh, all the major problems uh, in happening in the plot of the movie are all 
being brought up in this one scene and everyone's yelling at each other. No, you shut the fuck up. We only have five minutes to shut the thing down. Uh, you know, whatever their stupid problems are. And, and it was just like one after the other. This person has a problem. This person's mad about it. And then the next person has a problem. And someone else is mad about it. And then Dwayne the, Dro- Dwayne the Rock Johnson pulls out the biggest fucking handgun you've ever seen, sticks it in the mouth of a monster that is stuck in a wall that has an IV oh, bag yeah. hooked up to it, <laughs> blows its brains out, looks at everyone and says, you got 20 minutes to evacuate. Go. No, so when he does that, they're like, they're like, oh, maybe the, the mutation can be reversible. And he's like, look at this thing. Like, that is irreversible. They're like, no, it, it might not be. He's like, no, it's irreversible. <laughs> Because he's dead. <laughs> and it was so just... Oh, my God. Uh, I loved it. I loved it. We have a term for this that we like to call whenever we see a movie like this in terms of just the over-the-top insanity of it. Uh, we like to call it a masterpiece of shit. And um, I think this kind of applies somewhat to this film. Yeah, it was... Uh, it, it was really good about being bad. Um yeah, no, I guess we never really kind of summarized the plot, so... The plot is... The plot is they, they go to this, like, science lab on another planet to find some scientists that went missing, uh, and then in the process they find, you know, the monsters that the scientists accidentally created and turned into, and then it becomes about trying to figure out if there's still anyone alive down there and what to do, whatever. It gets really convoluted and boring would have been so much better just would have been like oh yeah we open up a portal to hell but yeah oh no, apparently oh no the christian market they they're, they're not gonna want to watch a movie where people kill demons it's like that's the only reason you're gonna open this up for the actual christian market is if you actually have it have an anti-demon yeah. stance what the fuck is wrong with you? yeah so that was a bad decision but um they were carrying around some pretty big guns they were. The uh, firearms so. they used in this, they basically did fiberglass shells over actual firearms. Um, mm-hmm. The main rifle that every most characters in this film were walking around with was a Heckler & Koch uh, G36, which is a very distinctive-looking firearm, which is actually used by the German Bundeswehr uh, to this day. They're in the process of switching over to the Heckler & Koch uh, HK416 just because of some accuracy issues. But, uh, no, if you need your movie... To look sci-fi as fuck, you give your guys a G36. Because actually, why later in the film, when they're walking through an armory right on the wall there, they have the good old-fashioned Jurassic Park, Terminator, Franky, Spas 12 sitting on the wall. You don't even got to modify that thing without <laughs> it making it look like something out of the not-too-distant future. Well, and that's the thing. Like They gave one guy like this huge minigun. Uh, and he maybe shoots like 10 shots out of it and then dies. At a monkey. Yeah. And then he dies without ever getting to use it again. And it's like, what a waste. Like, what a cock tease, you know? And then The Rock picks it up, he uses it to kill some zombies, and he goes, eh, screw it, and gets rid of it. It's just like, oh, yeah. come on. And then, like, the BFG in the movie, um, it looked like a, it looked like a giant Nerf gun, <laughs> just painted black. Yeah, pretty much. Um, and they used it to shoot big blue melty holes in walls great you know that's like if the um didn't even kill anything with it <laughs> yeah no it's like the equivalency of the fucking death star using that to uh, you know play asteroids it's like no yeah. no yeah they didn't even kill anything with it so um but yeah what uh, what else I, I know there was a, a couple more good things oh yeah want to talk about the uh like the scene that everyone remembers from this movie elmer ah yes the first person shooter aspect of it where for about five minutes it cuts to the perspective of <clears throat> john reaper grim running around from a first person perspective of his as he's killing all these zombies and these demons that are running at him throughout this facility which at this point it's no longer on mars they are on earth at this point Oh, under yeah. quarantine where it's just like okay you're already basically you're already eating your own tail at this point but um 
He's running around with a big assault rifle shooting zombies. I'm just like, would it really be that hard? I mean, he pulls a chainsaw at one point. Would it really be that hard for you to suddenly pick up a shotgun and you see that first-person perspective of shooting zombies with a shotgun? I mean, come on. Yeah, but he's doing it with an assault rifle. And the whole time, there's, like, this really cheesy, like, MIDI track of, like, rock music playing. Uh, which is kind of fitting to the games, it, like a little bit. It would be, unfortunately, this was the mud vein slash uh, puddle of mud era of music. So, yeah. Um, yeah, think of basically like doing a MIDI sampling 8 bit version of Nickelback for five minutes as you're killing Yeah, the, zombies, the sound so. font was there, but the genre of music was a little different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I guess the other thing to kind of talk about is then the person who turns out to turn into the Pinky in that, played by the great Dexter Fletcher, who has been in such fantastic films as Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. And then after this film, has now become a very highly regarded director as he was the Academy Award winning director of Rocket Man from a couple years ago. Oh, man. Yes, he plays half a person who has the bottom half of his teleported off screen earlier in the film and he is now just literally half a human on a fucking wheelchair and then he turns into the pinky monster <laughs> yeah he seems surprisingly okay with half of his body just being teleported away he's just like well that's what happens at least i still got my sweat my sweaters and my nipples <laughs> uh, yeah and i guess kind of the only other big thing about this movie that's of any merit is that this is directed by a Polish cinematographer who has worked on quite a few actual good movies. Um, everything from the works of Richard Donner. He's worked with, uh, you know, he, he was the cinematographer of the Species films. Uh, Speed, he was the cinematographer for that, for Jan de Bont, the guy who, you know, shot fucking Robocop here. <laughs> you know, someone who knows how to shoot a movie, and I will give it to this film, and that is the one thing I kept saying to Levy the entire time. This movie looks really good. It's it, shot on film. Yeah. It uses moody lighting. It's not flat. It's not fucking Yuva Bowl. I mean... The whole thing isn't just blue lit to be spooky. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no. I, this It had a lot of charm. It had a lot of charm. I... I mean, should we get into bops or flops yet? Or well, I'm just going to say this. We're going to see uh, Mr... Now, I'm very sorry, but I'm not Polish. So I'm going to try to say this as best I can without butchering it too much. Mr. Andrzej uh, Bart, uh, Bartok, uh, Bartokowiak. Um, we're going to be seeing him in the not-too-distant future, I've got a feeling. Yep, yep. After he did this film, he did a little movie called Street Fighter, <laughs> The Legend of Chun-Li. Uh, yeah, that'll be a fun one. I like how he thought to himself, well, Doom was a flop. Maybe I just need to switch franchises <laughs> instead of getting out of the genre. <laughs> That's what he, that was his promising takeaway. <laughs> but, uh, no, uh, yes, no, if anything, I move over to the bop and flop yeah. uh, side of it. Yeah, let's, uh, you want me to go first or you want to go first? Well, this is your first time seeing it, so I'd like to hear what you have to say. Oh, yeah, this is my first time seeing this movie. Um, I was expecting it to be a flop, but um, this one was surprisingly a bop for me. Uh, it It is a little slow at times, but like it has all these uh, these really cheesy, tropey moments. Uh, and like you said, it's like... It's like shot really well, so it's it's an entertaining movie to have on, and maybe like bullshit with your friends and have a beer with during like you don't need to be glued to it to enjoy it. But yeah, I had a it, it was a romp, you know. I had a lot of fun. I laughed way too hard tonight when you and I saw emo Christian guy cutting himself with a fucking crucifix into his breast <laughs> after he used the Lord's name in vain. You and I laughed way too hard at that, so. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I've always thought this movie was a gigantic flop, but I got to say, coming back and watching it, and especially after living in a post blood vein world, or sorry, blood rain. Blood rain. <laughs> yeah. Um, I got to say, this movie is definitely a bop. It, just looking at it, I mean, I hate to say it, this is like one of the most meh movies I've ever seen in yeah. terms of you. You see the setup for it, you're like, oh yeah, 
and they completely biff the land. <laughs> it's like right out of the gate, you get an A+, plus, and then you shit your pants so hard, you're like, <laughs> okay, partial credit, you're going to see. Yeah, what did, what did I say earlier? I said, like, if I think if we watched this a year ago, we would be shitting all over it right now. But after our learned experiences of all these other really bad video game movies like Blood Rain, um, I just really enjoyed myself for this one. So, yeah, thanks for thanks for uh, for recommending this one, Elmer. I'm actually kind of shocked. I thought we were going to be having another week back where we're having a hell of awful time after watching, you know, for Contra <laughs> Aliens. But uh, yeah. Yeah, no, if anything, I can, you know, you can definitely see the Aliens influence on this, where it's yeah. like, no, you guys definitely should have went more Predator. But, uh, yeah, yeah, no, it, I have actually had a really good time watching this. Again. Yeah, this was fun. So that's a bop for both of us. That doesn't happen a whole lot. Not really. <laughs> Going forward, probably not much more. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, I mean, I guess the same probably won't be said about Doom Annihilation, but we'll let you know in a few months when we watch that one. I'm kind of excited. <laughs> I, I've i actually liked some of the uh, Universal 1313 or, or 1492 or whatever the fuck it was called that their like, direct-to-DVD division is. I've liked some mm. of those movies. So in a lot of ways, I'm like, eh, what's the worst I could have with Doom? I mean, come on. As long as you actually have demons from hell in the BFG, how bad could it be? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, yeah. I know. I've seen the trailer for the monsters <laughs> as well. Um. Yeah, but I guess with that we're going to we're going to end the podcast. Looks like we got maybe a couple people here that might want to say hi. So, um, yeah, if you uh, if you want to catch us live, head over to twitch.tv slash lebby. Um, and then if you're watching us live or you're watching us on YouTube and you want to just listen to us in audio format or whatever, um, you can find all of our stuff. Our YouTube links are. Spotify links, everything at gamelink.click. So, um, yeah, check us out over there. Give us a follow on all your stuff, and um, I guess we'll we'll surprise you next time with what we're going to watch. Yeah, I know. We're still kind of up in the air on that, too. So, yeah. hell, it's going to be a surprise for me next Sunday, too. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we'll catch you next time, everyone. Have a great week. Stay safe. Stay sexy. <laughs> Bye.